Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Whoops, I did not want to do that. What's going on here? There we go, I think I'm back. Let me start over. Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is June 24th of... Uh, 2018. Terrible to get old. You don't know, not only do you not know what day it is, you don't know what year it is or how old you are or anything else. Uh, this is going to be a short video, I hope. I've got this book out because I keep wanting to buy a Samson uh, cell phone or maybe even a tablet so that I can use the S Pen. I think it's called the S Pen or the whatever. I have the book. Just I got the book just so I could, uh, but I haven't bought any of those yet and probably won't. But i um, going to talk a little bit about politics. Because of that, this uh, video will not be monetized. That means you are not going to see any uh, ads placed on it, and I'm not going to make any money. I haven't made, haven't been making any money. I make about thirty dollars a month from YouTube, and I've been a YouTube producer since 2005 when uh, YouTube began. I was making videos before there was a YouTube. I was making videos, putting videos online before there was, before all of them, just about. Maybe, I think CompuServe might have beat me and uh, America Online, but that's it. Uh, wanted to mention to you, if you've been watching my videos, many of you have commented about my keyboard, and I have... Uh, several different keyboards. I I like keyboards, and I like mice. I swear, if I could find, and maybe this is it, the one I have now, maybe, if I could find the right mouse, I would just, that would be it. I would just stay with that mouse until it wore out, and then I would buy another one. Keyboards, I've had many excellent keyboards over the years, and this yeah, uh, you cannot fault, you know. This is a Logitech G710 Plus. It was a great keyboard. <laughs> and uh, many of you have commented about what keyboard are you using. And uh, yesterday, I, I'm always messing with computer stuff and have been since I got my first computer in 1978. Unless you count the T Texas Instrument TI-58 calculator as a computer because you could program it. And uh, so maybe that was my first computer. I don't know. But I'm always messing with things. And I think you know that if you watch, if you watch my videos... Uh, yesterday, I took this, or was it the day? I took this computer down, put it on the floor, and I put a Chrome box that we have up, reset it back to factory settings, you know, logged in, did all that type of stuff. And uh, then switched some things around. And I decided to switch keyboards and hook uh, use this keyboard I was already using well I was already using it for the uh, desktop PC computer yeah so that was it so anyway I hooked this up and then I at some point I was switching things around and I got a I have several of them laying around here that I had never used before brand new hubs and uh, 
I found a couple of them laying here that had never been used. And uh, both of them looked cheap. They didn't exactly feel cheap. They looked cheap. And I had a bad feeling, but I hooked it up and hooked everything into it and switched things around, switched the cameras around, and switched the keyboard to a different, because the keyboard you can plug, this keyboard you could, uh, you know, you plug one in <coughs> to USB, that's the keyboard, you plug the other one in, and it gives you power, so you have a USB outlet on here, which is, you know, convenient, for perhaps a mouse or a USB camera or something like that. So anyway, I hooked things up on the uh, and the keyboard flash with this new hub. It flashed a few times, you know, and uh, I thought no, everything else is working, but the keyboard it flash it, because it's lighted. It's a lighted keyboard. And flashed a few times, and then I switched things around, messed with it, and then it didn't didn't flash anymore, didn't do anything anymore. And uh, it got fried by the apparently by the hub. So I trashed the hub, and I'm going to trash this. Although it has screws right on the back, and it would be probably pretty easy to get into. And possibly I could get it. I may still do that, although I've got this sitting over to go out with the trash. Uh, I may take the back off and see if see what I see in there. And perhaps I'll see a condenser, or I doubt it, a condenser or a resistor or something that's that's uh, melted or something. It's a possibility, but I think this is this is dead. DRT dead right there. Uh, so anyway, I um, oh I see I lost my link. Where was that? Do I have another browser here? Nope, just that one. So um. I ordered a new, and oh, anyway, I have like this keyboard here. This is a nice keyboard. Um, what I, what I don't like about it is like the Q here. I showed you this before, but, and there's some other things. And I also, I like a, uh, a keyboard that has a, a wheel so you can adjust the volume up and down and uh, this one doesn't have that now it does have you can hit the function key and hit one of the you know the F one key to silence the speaker the F2 to uh, go down in volume and the F3 to increase it but I don't like to do I don't like Sorry. to do that Echo, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 90 degrees. Tonight, expect a low of 75 degrees. So, then I have an older Microsoft keyboard that you may see, that you will see in older videos that I've made. And it's, some of the letters are starting to rub off and... Uh, and I've gotten used to some higher quality. So I, um, let's go to Amazon. Where are you? Okay, well, I'll just type it in here. I ordered a new keyboard. It'll be here Tuesday. Um, And it's, 
it's about probably the best keyboard that uh, that you can get. I'm going by reviews. I've never had one of these, but I looked at a bunch of the YouTube reviews of it, and everybody. So they have a few different models. I'm getting the uh, blue keys. I'm getting the um, where it makes a clicking sound when you type on them, so forth and so on. And I think I'm, I've paid close to for these other keyboards. I've paid close to this price, but I think this might be the most expensive uh, keyboard. But it's going to be here Tuesday. I'll show it to you, or you'll hopefully see it sitting right here. Um, and it does have, I guess I should, uh, yeah. Here you see it has the uh, rotating volume control. Also, actually, what a whole bunch of you have asked me over all the time. I get asked quite often, uh, why do I have a gaming keyboard or do, or do I game? And then I say, no, I really don't game. And, you know, I really, and those comments that made me think too, why do, do I have, you know, why do I have programmable keys? Why do I have all of these? Because I'm not really into gaming that much. I do play Civilization VI occasionally. Uh, not against anybody, just kill some time cooking something that takes an hour I'll start the uh, play the game so I'm not watching the clock every few minutes for when, when the food is done or something And uh, so this doesn't have you know the programmable keys and all of that but um, I'll show it to you I'll do a little review of it when I get it but it's a, supposed to be a really see it's got you know four and a half stars from 1,129 customer reviews. Let's go down and take a little bit of a look at it. It has high performance mechanical Cherry MX blue keys, oversized volume knob. Uh, one thing too I will like about it, it has uh, one USB cable that plugs in. It doesn't have two, but it does have a hub, and there are two, and they're 3.0. So you have a 3.0 hub right here with uh, two outlets. Um, you know, this other keyboard, you had to plug into the two USBs on the computer, and, you know, one for the keyboard and then one for the hub. And the hub only gave you, you know, one on here. But uh, anyway, um, super, super speed typing has a aluminum top to it. Um, here's a better look at it. You can stop if the... Uh, Equipped with clicky Cherry MX keys, uh, dedicated media controls, oversized volume knob, two USB, oh, and they're 3.0, uh, whereas this one has a uh, USB place here, but it's 2.0. Uh, by the way, you can get... <laughs> I'm, I'm a touch typist, but occasionally I have to look. You can get this keyboard with nothing printed on the keys. Wow. <laughs> That's a confidence touch typist, I tell you. I would have to have. Occasionally I've got to look up and uh, see where something is. You know, one of the punctuations or something that I don't use a lot and sometimes I think I'm just getting so old that I, you know, I should put my name here someplace here's your Cherry MX keys 
I don't think this comes with a uh, a keyboard coming. I don't think it comes with a uh, thing to pull the keys off, and I don't think it comes with any extra keys, but you can order them. And so, like I'm not into gaming, but if I was into gaming, I could get uh, for the arrow keys, colored keys, or whatever. Two, if I, I think, uh, which doesn't matter to me, the lighting on the key, I think, is just white light only. So, there you have it. Ah, oh, oh. This is my uh, LG, I'm still using right now the LG wide monitor. Uh, fact, okay, if you're not interested in politics, which I don't think any of us are anymore, uh, uh, goodbye. <laughs> Please click the thumb up. Uh, it doesn't matter if you do that anyway, but... Uh, Uh, I just wanted to mention a few things. Uh, Sarah Sanders, um, anyway, the press secretary, she was apparently out with her family at a Mexican restaurant. And she was asked to leave by the manager because he did not approve, apparently, of who she works for. And she's the press secretary at the White House, so she works for the President of the United States. As you know, I'm 100%. I think he's, I think Donald Trump is a disaster. I'm actually fearful for the future of the United States. I'm concerned about what he may do or say, that, uh, or if, an, if a crisis of some sort comes up, I'm, I'm concerned. But I really don't approve. I can understand her being asked to leave and the other things that have happened like that uh, because people we we have very strong opinions now and in the case of this president I think you do need to uh, in the proper channels you know express let although he only watches Fox News so he doesn't know <laughs> But I do think that, uh, you know, people do need to let the president and let other people know that we do not approve. And we need to let other countries know, okay, this man was elected president of the United States, but a vast number of U.S. citizens uh, do not approve of his policies and his actions and what he says about our allies such as Canada and France and Germany and the UK and other places. Uh, but it's too bad that we've come to this point now where uh, it's so corrosive, so divided. Uh, it's, it's really dangerous and sad and breaks my heart really that we've come to that you know our founding fathers created such a tremendous government and such a tremendous constitution and we have a president of the United States who every day lies repeatedly and then that also he doesn't he doesn't know American history at all every time he says something it's incorrect about about the history of you know the United States uh, he doesn't understand or the Constitution of the United States. He says such things as, you know, the Constitution gets in his way to keep him from doing things and just on and everything. But it's too bad we've come to the type of discord between people here in the United States that we have come to. That's not good. Not good for us. You know, there are families that that can't 
stand to talk to each other or have a turkey or have a Thanksgiving dinner or a Christmas party together because of the uh, feelings that people have on the issue because Donald Trump has a hard core of dedicated people who are for him no matter what he says, no matter what he does, those people are for him. And there isn't anything you can do that is going to persuade those people to change their opinion of him. You would hope that they would be able to look and say, okay, you know, I, I like this about Donald Trump, but he shouldn't be lying. I like this about Donald Trump, but he shouldn't, you know, do the things, these other things, but they don't. They're hardcore for him, and that's it. And then you have the rest of the people out there, and there's no wiggle, you know, wiggle room. In the past, you could have, uh, you know, discussions and opinions, and people could sit down and not come to blows with each other, you know, over, over things. But it, oh, it pisses me off. And I, I'm actually I'm a laid back person. I am not confrontational. I do not want confrontation. I've never wanted it. I always try to, you know, look find good into people. When I was working, when I was a welder. It didn't matter. I was underneath my hood, and I just didn't have, I, you know, the 30 years I worked hospital security, there were people that I worked with, uh, usually one in every, in the security department. Usually, for some reason, it was the guy who had been there first in security, or the, or the longest, and nobody liked him. Nobody liked him in the hospital, and I was able to get along, you know, with the guy um, but so I don't like confrontation and I but things really upset me about the current situation you have it was I think about a week or two ago and Donald Trump said and his minions his other people right at that time that must have been the talking points that Fox News had put out to everybody, and they were saying that, uh, and Donald Trump said that the Democrats were confrontational, and they wouldn't agree to anything. And I'm like, oh my God, my God, how you know? Because when Obama was elected president, it wasn't just a few Republicans; they appeared together on the steps of the, you know of the uh, congressional uh, offices and is and put out a joint statement we are going to do everything in our power to make sure that president obama fails we're not going to agree to anything we're not going to pass anything he, we are going to attempt to make his we're going to make sure he's not reelected and we're not going to do anything. And that's what they did. Four years, they didn't pass anything. They wouldn't cooperate in any way. And they were bound and determined that, you know, he would not be reelected, that that would be a, you know, because that would be a failure here. You know, he, he only had a four-year term. He wasn't reelected. Well, he was reelected. And then they, okay, we're going to make sure that, it, you know, the same thing. Eight years of wasted time that Congress should have been able to accomplish something. And you have the same sort of stuff going on, things that, that the Republican, you know, accuse, things that they accuse the Democrats of doing, the Republicans do. Uh they're saying, you know, I would like for the uh, hearing or for the investigation, Mueller's investigation. I, I hope it comes to it comes to a conclusion as quickly as possible. 
but uh, Kenneth Starr was an, a special prosecutor appointed by the Republicans back when Bill Clinton was elected. And he spent the entire eight years, and it went, I think it went beyond eight years, or else it was, they investigated the Clintons nonstop the entire time. They spent a ton of money. The investigations went on for years and years and years. They never found anything. Uh, Republican convention, you know, she's, she ran for election. Uh, Trump beat her. And uh, at the Republican convention, the crowd is hollering, lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. Uh, that's something else that we've never, you know, we've never had. We've never had, and you had Trump, and you still have him blaming uh, the Clintons, blaming uh, Obamas. He blames them for everything and talks about, you know, locking them up, investigating them, putting them in prison, all that type of stuff. We've never had a country that <laughs> where, you know, they, that happens in other countries. You know, that you have a change of power and they uh, arrest the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, other party. They, in Russia, they kill, you know, Putin kills opponents and newspaper reporters and everything else. So I don't see any solution to the situation. I just see it getting, getting worse. And uh, anyway, I wanted to mention, for some reason, I wanted to mention the two, I'm sympathetic to, um, she was there apparently with her family at the restaurant. But, you know, I'm sorry, I, I don't know, does she need the money, I mean, why, I feel sorry for her, but although- I kick off to the story after a server at- Just imagine, Donald Trump lies every day, the next day he changes his stories, uh, and every day she has to go out there and she has to support him, and she has to uh, try to, wow, I mean, I mean, I would quit. I have, I quit jobs before in the past. Um, uh, I went toe to toe with, you know, of course I wasn't, you know, somebody in the White House. I wasn't somebody that had a, a prestigious job where, you know, but, you know, the director of security or whatever, he, he'd be waiting for me to come to his office and I'd walk in the door, Jim, okay, this doesn't apply to you. Now this new policy doesn't apply to you. It, it just applies to, it doesn't apply to your shift that you're in charge of. It apply, and I, I'd go in and I'd say, no, th this policy is not going to be allowed and you can't exempt me or exempt, you know, my shift from it. If it's a policy, it's a policy for all of the, all of the shifts, and that's why it has to. And he, you know, he would. The times he didn't give up, uh, I did a grievance, and I won four times. Four out of four. And. You know, I. There was racial prejudice going on. And. In the department. And the director of security was the biggest, you know, racist of them all. But, uh, you know, I didn't allow it. And, uh, you know, a security officer lost his job. And I had, I had to pursue it. It was like I was told okay, he's not, you don't supervise him, you're day shift supervisor, he works a second shift. 
And I said, no, he's going to be fired. No, no, you know. And I went to the personnel department, and the assistant director of personnel was there. But the uh, personnel director, the department head, was in Florida at a convention or something. And I told you the story before. The, you know, the assistant director of the Department of Human Resources, you know, says, oh, no, it has to wait till Mr. Vernon Johnson comes back. And I said, no. It is not going to wait. You are the assistant, you know, director of human resources here. You need to take care of it. You need to take care of it right now. It is not, well, you have to wait until I said, no, it's going to happen today. And then I went to the assistant administrator of the hospital, and I went in and explained what the situation was. And the man was fired that day. They had a hearing later. He was allowed to come back. He was still, you know, he was allowed to come back to go to the personnel department, and Vernon Johnson was back then, and Vernon Johnson, you know, after hearing both sides, uh, and actually I was in the office, the Vernon, Vernon Johnson, the director of personnel, a really great man, by the way. Uh, he's passed away. The director of security there, I kind of liked also, who was a racist, he's passed away. But... Uh, the uh, supervisor of the second shift uh, showed up along with Chuck and uh, also the supervisor of the midnight shift showed up and they actually didn't say anything at all. They could tell from they, t you know, they told him they were gonna, oh, you know, Chuck, well, we're, we're gonna, do, you know, we're gonna get this. Jim doesn't, Jim can't do this, whatever. Well, Jim did that, so I'm not afraid to, you know, rattle cages, and especially I'm not afraid to speak up to authority. But I don't understand how anybody who would go to work for, for Donald Trump. Now maybe. When he was elected, well, of course, we knew what he was like before he was elected. But how they can stay, you know, and put up, do they need the job and the money that much? It's got to be bad for their health. It's got to be bad for their psychological stuff. You know, it's not just that she's and her family, you know, is kicked out of a Mexican restaurant. I mean, <laughs> um, it's, why do people allow themselves to be humiliated and put in that type of situation? Now, I can see if you have a family to support. I mean, I always, you know, I got married at 26, uh, Twelve years later, you know, my wife wanted a divorce, and sh she got the divorce. But I always, you know, I paid child support. I kept my kids covered, you know. There was a job or two I would like to have changed and gone to instead of working hospital security. I had the opportunity to work at a security at a community college. But because of the health insurance, and that, I think I'd have been okay because my kids were really pretty healthy. But I stayed with a job, you know, I mean, because you do have to, you have to make a living, you know, you have to make a living for your family. You have to make a living for yourself, too. I mean, but when I was a welder, I went to a place, uh, to get a welding job. I went in. Okay, you're hired. And I think I told this before. You had to crawl inside of a truck. Well, some people, I mean, you know, you didn't. But there, you had to get inside the truck, tanker truck, and weld inside. And the metal we were welding on or whatever was really toxic to, to breathe in those kind of fumes. 
all the guys who worked there said, I was a new guy, they said, oh, hey, uh, Jim, but you know, when you go home and drink a lot of milk, it gets uh, whatever it was, galvanized or whatever, it gets it out of your system. And I went to, you know, I went to the boss or whatever my first day, and I said, you need to get some air hoses in, in there to pump air in and get, get that out. And the boss said, well, none of these other guys said, I don't care. You know, if, if they're what they're willing to do, I'm not going to go into those tanks and weld. When I come back tomorrow, you better have hoses for air to go in there, you know, whatever. I came back the next walked in. No hoses. Goodbye. Of course, I was a welder. They were in demand. And I had a job, you know, the next day. Uh, I know times are different. Because I'm, we're talking about those people up there. Though. We're not talking about average Joes. I'm, I've mentioned this before. I was lucky. I always had... I had two jobs a lot of times. I always had a job. I was never without a job. And it would be difficult nowadays with for a young person or for any person uh, when you have to work. I don't know what I would have done. I would. I don't know now what I would do because, like I said, you know, you. You have to be, I mean, you have to be working. You have to be able to supply what you need, and then you have to be able to supply what you need for your family. And and now, of course, I'd have to be, you know, buying computer stuff, wouldn't I? Although I was back then, too. Uh, but... Yeah, I, I just, and of course it wouldn't do any good with uh, Donald Trump to go into his office and say that you are wrong because he watches Fox News and Fox News tells him, you know, what he wants to hear and he buys into that and then he repeats that. If you want to reach Donald Trump, the only way to reach Donald Trump would be to go on Fox News. And, uh, okay, you're going to jump up here, D.D.? Let me get this broken keyboard out of the way. Okay, there you are. There's Dee Dee. Is it time for you to eat already, huh? No, or you just want to be, okay, you just want to be held. Okay, there we go, there we go. Maybe you'll calm me down. So, you're not going to drink out of my Coke. She doesn't drink out of my Coke, but I don't want her tail dipping in there. She's looking for food. Okay. I think she wanted me to hold her then, but okay, you okay, you realized you checked and there was no food, so now you can come back to be held. Okay. Oh, they're bringing uh okay. Oh. See, where are you here? I'll get you in view here. Well, they're bringing by the back by the room, Tom. They're bringing Roseanne, or they're ringing, bringing back the Connors. I made a video about that, saying that I thought it would, that I thought it'd be really a bad idea to do that. They're bringing back without uh, Roseanne. And I saw some commentary on CNN or someplace else. And people are, you know, I'm not the only one. Other people are saying that's probably a mistake for, I think it was ABC uh, Network, that that's because, and I agree, that's what I said before. The Trump supporters went to that show when it came back for when a 10th season was created because they heard that Roseanne, you know, was in favor of Trump and that there were things said in the show that supported Trump or whatever. So they came and they flocked. And 
I think that because I was a fan of the old Roseanne show and uh, I went to look and I wasn't, it had nothing to do, I, di I didn't really care for it. It had nothing at all to do with the comments that she made in support of uh, Trump or whatever. I just thought, eh, you know, not really funny, but they're just going to throw in one of these things or two occasionally or whatever. And that, that had nothing to do with it. It was just, uh, it just wasn't any good anymore. And, but when that was canceled, uh, you know, when it, when it's coming back, it's going to be that, of course, they've already announced that, that she has nothing to do with it. She has no part in it. Roseanne doesn't. And, uh, but the Trump people know that the show was canceled because of things that she said, not on the show, but, you know, tweeting. And uh, so they're going to do everything to, they'll, they'll be trying to boycott it and everything else. So ABC's making a big mistake. They should have just held, I know they spent a ton of money and the first season was a big success. But uh, they, uh, they, should, they shouldn't have tried to bring it back. It's going to end up humiliating them. It's going to end up, you know, and it'll give the Trump people, you know, uh, a victory, you know, they'll they'll get the show canceled and they'll feel that they have been, you know, victorious or something. So I guess that was it. I thought I had more to, uh, I guess that was it. Oh, I guess I should. I'm back using my PC Still have the monitor. I'm using this keyboard, which is a Razer keyboard. I mean, it's it's built like a. Uh, it's the uh, Razer Black Window Ultimate 2014 version. You wouldn't want to drop that on your foot. Nice keyboard, but not for me. And I think I'm going to be much happier with this new keyboard that I'm getting. Um. I mentioned Ham Radio Field Day. That uh, is over now. What I was thinking about doing, and I didn't do it, was going to tune in to the various frequencies, and you could hear the ham radio operators talking to each other and sending traffic to each other and and uh, that type of stuff. I've got some things in that area, that uh, things that I want to do. It just... Dang, you hit me with your tail, Dee Dee. Where's your tail? Dee Dee, she's a sweet cat. She really is. She's really a smart cat, too. I'm not... Let's see. She's really a sweet cat. And she's, she's very smart. And she's... We don't have to worry about opening the door up. If we open the door up, she doesn't want to leave. She was a wild cat. And... Uh, feral cat and she was around here actually she was at a motel was it a motel where a lady that lives in the apartment one of the apartments here she was there and they put food and water out for it and everything but she was a wild cat there feral cat the lady uh, couldn't keep her here but the lady brought her here and turned her loose here so I would see her outside uh, trying to catch birds and do stuff like that. Never occurred to me to feed her. And my ex-wife, Darlene, uh, told our son, our grown son, to put some food out for the cat. And uh, then the, the cat, you know, came for the food and uh, wanted to come in. And she has bonded 
with uh, with Jimmy. She sleeps on the bed with him. She gets up close to him as she can. And ouch! There you go. Okay. I mentioned Jimmy. I guess she's heading that way. We use the Alexa. We use the other word, though. Uh, or Darlene does to uh, as the alarm every five hours to feed the cat. Although I have a automatic cat and dog feeder that I was sent. I was sent a couple of them to review. We have one that we uh, still have, but uh, Darlene uses the Alexa uh, and just sets a timer or an alarm. So of course, <laughs> Dee Dee knows when that goes off that it's time. But she usually, usually before that, she knows the time has come in about an hour, an hour and a half before. So if I walk in there, she'll be coming, you know, to get me to kind of lead me, sort of like Lassie in the movies, you know, or the TV show, sort of like lead me over to her, and you'll she'll sit at her cat dish, you know, and look at me with those big eyes or something. So I'm not sure what my next video, anyway, I've got some ideas. Uh, but they, I have some ideas, but they always involve some work, and I don't want to do any work. I do think I should start doing live streaming video. Uh... That's what I did a long time ago before anybody else was doing it. When I started doing live streaming video, I had to use my own computer. To do, it was, so you were getting it off of my computer, and the computers were not as powerful in the past. So if I had six or seven people, one, well, even less, them, I wasn't able to do anything with my computer. Other <laughs> When they were watching the video, I couldn't do anything, you know. But... Uh, Now, I think I could I put out some good streaming videos on YouTube. So easy to do. Oh, there won't be enough of you to help me out in this thing. But, you know, we thanks to you, we have uh, two and a two and a half thousand, two thousand five hundred subscribers. So when I passed the 2,000, was it 2,500? Anyway, uh, YouTube is coming out with a new thing, but you have to have 20,000 subscribers. And I would like it. It's uh, They're kicking it out like the last couple of days, so... It hasn't been kicked out to everybody yet, I don't think, but it's going to within the next few days. So you may go. I haven't seen it. So I guess I should just go to some popular site and probably see it. And what it's going to do is allow the producer to uh, pick up products and have them appear underneath, apparently, the video, different advertisements that you pick out. Uh, don't know all the details. You can't just pick out. I think you have to pick them out through, not Cafe Press, but something like that. Uh, so there'll be a lot of T-shirts and mugs and uh, plaques and that type of stuff. So I'd like to get 20,000 subscribers, but it's taken me since 2005 to get 2,000 subscribers or 2,500 subscribers. Um, somebody do the math. I'll, hell, I'll be dead by the time I get 20,000 subscribers. Oh, well. Uh, that's a cheery subject to end on. Thank you very much for watching.